<laughs> okay, so it is one o'clock, so it's time to kick off. Uh, welcome <laughs> to Grand Rounds. My name is Tom Ford, and I'm uh, the chair and organizer of Grand Rounds. And I am very pleased to uh, welcome to Grand Rounds today the team from the Center of Medical Education here in Dundee. I said in my email blurb earlier in the week, we have a globally renowned medical education department and program here in Dundee and we are indeed incredibly lucky to, to have that right on our doorstep and I've been the beneficiary of teaching from uh, the CME and being able to work with them uh, more recently in the role of, uh, of, of lecturing and, and helping out with their programs and um, this week they've asked if they can talk about their degree programs we're going to hear from Fiona Mio who's going to talk about the undergraduate BMSC program and then Mandy Moffat and Susie Schofield are going to talk about the Masters in Medical Education. As usual, the um, Zoom etiquette applies. Please mute your microphone unless you're speaking. Uh, try, don't try and share your screen unless you're one of the speakers. If you have a question, please put it in the chat box. Um, you can direct, mm -hmm. direct it to me or just to anybody and I'll try to um, corral the questions at the end. And with no further ado, we're handing over to Fiona. Thanks very much. Thank you. We'll just get you to share your screen and we are good to go. Okay, well, thank you, Tom. That's great. Um, yes, I'm here today to present the BMSC Medical Education Interpolated Degree Programme that we set up really 10 years ago now within the medical school. So I'm gonna give you an overview of what we've been doing in the past 10 years and hopefully inform you a little of, of our, uh, our progress. So um, the, the programme is run by myself and Kevin McConville, and many of you all know Kevin, he's a clinical senior lecturer in the NBCHB programme and also acting head at the moment for the general practice uh, programme. So, the BMSC programme is set within the Centre for Medical Education now, very much core part of the NBCHB programme, and we're based on the Ninewell site currently in the Mackenzie building. So really just to give you a little bit of an overview of what we've done and where we're at, um, the programme was created by myself and Susan Law, and Susan Law was a GP here in the department um, a few years ago. She retired maybe about three years ago now. But Susan and I set up the BMSD approximately 10 years ago, and it's the first integrated medical education degree in Scotland. And it was at that time, and it still currently is the only integrated uh, medical education degree that we're aware of. There are a few in the UK, I think there's probably about three or four down south, but nothing else in Scotland. So we feel very privileged and honoured to still be very much at the fore of the BMSC education route. It was previously known as the Teaching and Medicine. We set it up as the BMSC Teaching and Medicine, but then changed its name when we moved into the Centre for Medical Education. So as I said, Kevin McConville um, supports the programme, has been supporting the programme since 2018, which is great. Um, since the programme started in 2010, we've had about 82 students come through the programme and they have all graduated, usually with either first class honours or two ones. And we have another further 20 new starts starting in September 2020. And just to let people know that the integrated programme generates normally very small numbers. So we're quite privileged with the numbers that we've actually got through the system. And they're definitely building up um, over the, the years. So we're taking in more students um, as the, the programme develops. In 2019, though, we identified that really we could extend the BMSC and not just have the students be awarded for their intercalated programme, but to get them associate fellowship of the Higher Education Academy or Advanced HE as it's known as. So we applied and after quite a rigorous process, we're given the opportunity of offering this to our students. And we're absolutely delighted to say that this year for the first time, we've got the 18 students who were in the programme 2019-20, uh, graduating with both their BMSE and being awarded the Associate Fellow. So well done to our students. Um, all students at the current time have been medical students of the programme. And the programme is offered at the end of year three before the students move into year four. So they basically take one year out to do this intercalated uh, year. 
but we also offer the programme to dentistry um, at the end of their year too. Unfortunately, we haven't had any interest from them, but the offer still um, extends to the dental students. To date, all the students have been local students from the MBCHB programme, but we do offer it nationally and internationally, and we have had interest of recent times from Hong Kong. I think COVID's thrown a little bit of a, a, a slant in there, but we're hoping that we can build up international relations um, for the BMSE programme. So it's a full-time academic year of study and it's a face-to-face -face, or has been a face-to-face -face up until now, but naturally with the COVID situation, we're going to offer semester one this coming year with an online approach and a blended perhaps for the semester two with the students coming in, but time will tell for that. So the main approach for the, the, the BMS programme is really to draw on the, the students who are interested in developing their skills and knowledge in medical education. And we think that we give them a high quality um, educational experience, which is really very much supported by both academic and our clinical, uh, um, clinical staff. So we're delighted to have so many of our, our staff on board teaching in this programme. So the students can get further information either through UK Intercalate, um, which is an online um, support system for them to look at the different BMSE programmes that are available and where they're um, access accessible from. And they can also access the Dundee University one, and this is the one on the, I think it would be the left side of the screen. Um, so all the details regarding entry requirements and um, the way in which they can be admitted to the programme, the fees, etc., are accessible through this link. On the other side, um, it's again just showing them that they apply to the medical school. So if they're interested in coming in the programme, they make their initial application to the medical school. And with their application, they include a personal statement, CVs and references. At the point of admission, Kevin and myself will screen the applicants and decide who would merit coming on the, the BMSE programme. And I have to say, for all the students who have put us down as a first choice, to date, we've accepted all of them. Very, very keen to encourage youngsters to come into medical, medical education. And we see this as being one of the, the best routes. So within the programme itself, we deliver three large modules and you'll see the bubbles here on the screen that the, there's one module which has four units of assessment. And the first one's all about the core educator knowledge, skills and attitudes and the units of assessment are to do with the assessment methodology, educational theory and practice within the context in which they're working in, policy practice, and curriculum design and development. In addition to that, we very much focus on their personal and professional development, and that fits very neatly into their teaching portfolio. And I'm gonna come back to that just in a minute. And then the third component is for them to identify a project and to build up their project into um, a piece of research, which will then follow through into dissertation. And to support that, there's a unit called research design. And part of that is critical appraisal of the literature in preparation for then undertaking the research itself. So when the students come in the programme, we say to them, you know, you've got to really work hard and you can play hard. So we allow them opportunities, particularly within the opportunities that exist within building up their portfolio and linking that very much to the modules that we offer for example, they all take an opportunity of going through to the Scottish Parliament to listen to First Minister's question time and to uh, give them a, an experience of just hearing how policy and practice is made. We also give them opportunities of going down to conferences, for example, down to London, to the ASME and AMI conferences, wherever they're held in the UK. And we certainly encourage the students to bring other ideas to us in order for them to gain the experience, all rounded experience um, from an educator's perspective. And that may well include a number of um, key uh, meetings within, within the medical school curriculum and um, going along and seeing how policy and practice is made, how curriculum has changed, etc. So within the, uh, the programme, say we do obviously have to assess them and the summative assessment is through coursework and portfolio work and the research project dissertation. So the three modules 
there's the coursework, which is made of three components of two of 3,000 word assignments and one critical appraisal of 1,500 word assignment. The teaching portfolio of evidence is authentic evidence. So they have got to demonstrate from applying the theory to practice and gaining the experience of teaching and other um, opportunities in order to build up their portfolio, which is a reflective journey. Within that 3,000 word teaching portfolio, they embed 1,400 words of that um, in relation to the um, fellowship, the associate fellowship requirements, which is all to do with activities, knowledge and values. <clears throat> so we give them guidance and support in developing um, that part of the, the, the portfolio. But we also allow creativity and we very much encourage the students to develop the portfolio in line with their own areas of interest, their own experiences, so everyone is individualised, but yet they've got to meet the criteria that we set. And then the research project, so they, they follow their research project through right from the start of the programme in September, right the way through until May when they have their hand in of their dissertation. They're given supervision for this and the supervisors are great. We have a range of supervisors in the medical school and out with who support the projects. And this project or dissertation at the end of the time is equivalent to 11,000 words. So we encourage them and support them through this. This is just a, a photo to, to show you that yes, the 18 students, unfortunately we haven't had graduation and haven't been able to get them in their gowns this year, but the 18 students have come through the programme in 1920 this year. And this is um, just standing for us with their award for the Associate Fellow and great to, to see another uh, group come through the programme with very good um, award classifications. So delighted for that. I would also point out the Associate Fellow, we are the, the only intercalated programme of this kind to be awarded the Associate Fellowship. So we're absolutely delighted here in Dundee um, to, to be able to offer that. In addition, though, we have um, last year we identified, you know, we have one of the international leading lights, leading authorities in medical education, Professor Ronald Harden, OBE. And of course, Professor Harden has so many years experience in undergraduate, postgraduate and continuing medical education. And we identified there was a, an opportunity here to have an award in his name. And he was very uh, graceful and, and delighted to be, to be asked this. So we put in place an award, not just for the BMSC Medical Education Programme, but for this Masters in Medical Education as well. And this is our two students for the two different programmes who were given the awards. The award itself is based on the best podium presentation of the educational research project and dissertation. So it's not based on the fact that these students have done incredibly well within their, their, their dissertation. It's more the project itself and the way in which they have presented it. And they have criteria to meet. And then the criteria is judged by, um, by staff to then nominate who the award winners are. So we're absolutely delighted that we've got that award now. Again, quite unique to, to um, the BMSC programmes. The programmes, the programme really wouldn't work effectively without the, the support of all our academic and clinical staff and also those who are willing to come forward with projects. And a few years ago, we put out a call to the medical school to ask them for ideas for projects. And this seems to be working really effectively for by staff um, identify an area of which they would like um, a student to research, to look into in, in greater depth. And the, the projects are supported by these individuals, along with Kevin and myself as secondary supervisors or first supervisors, depending on the nature of the projects. So I would make a plea for anybody who's in the audience today, if you have any educational projects that you think might fit the need of an undergraduate student, please do come forward. Um, I have my email address at the end of the slides. Please do let Kevin or I know because we'd be delighted to hear from you. But it's fine for us to get these students to develop the projects, to develop their dissertations, but we also see the need that this is, um, there, there's an opportunity here for publications so a few years ago, we embedded the writing, a journal article a course within the, the programme of study and students are given the opportunity to consider their piece of work for publication 
and we have had quite a number of successful uh, publish publications of recent times. So we're delighted with that. So again, we would ask supervisors wherever possible, if you'd like something, looked into research and then to have publications, as I say, very happy to hear from you. So say we are, um, we, we offer the, the, this programme locally, nationally, internationally, and further information can be obtained from the University of Dundee website. Um, we're about one of 10 programmes currently offered within the, the medical school. Um, so if anybody wants, anybody wants further detail, this is a link to, to find out further more information about it. And I couldn't bring up the student voice to play this for you today, but I've left the link there, the YouTube clip of our two Emily's who um, were in the programme last year. And they talk about their um, experience of the programme and the value of doing an integrated year um, to, their, to their studies and their future career. So I'm going to pause there and thank you for listening and just ask if anybody has any questions for me before I hand over to Mandy. No questions through to me on the chat okay. as yet. I just wanted to um, congratulate you on the AFHEA accreditation. I, um, you mentioned there how it, you know, it's a challenge to get through that. And uh, I just want to reiterate to the audience how much of a challenge it is to get that accreditation. Um, yeah. uh, having done it you know, on an individual basis, just from, it, it really is a very robust process. Um, and to get that accreditation for an entire um, program, I think is fantastic. So well done to the entire team for that. That's really a massive accomplishment. Thank you. Um, Mandy, are we going straight to you or are we going to Susie? We could do, I'll, uh, I'll share our slides. Um... Let's hope that's the right one. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. There we go. I, I, I'll let you do it. Yeah. yeah. I also want to say I've been involved in supervising some of the BMSC projects um, with Fiona over the last couple of years, and it's it's been a great experience, um, and it's a yeah really well run program and the students that are coming through are just so yeah their skills and their um, enthusiasms and um, fabulous so yeah if you are interested in supervising i would recommend it <laughs> anyway so um onwards susie and i want to talk about the master's program that we have within the center for medical education and just to go through some of the key and um, points that we think that you would be interested in if it's something that you've been considering um, you know, over, the, over the time. So again, at a glance, um, it was created by Professor Ronald Harden um, and it's been running for over 40 years. Um, I've been fairly new in, to Dundee in that time, but even prior to Dundee, I was always very aware of the programme um, there. We have just over 4,000 graduates um, who have come through the programme in the 40 years and we currently have about 1,000 students who are on the programme at any one point and these are both locally and locally we mean by Dundee, Scotland, UK and also globally as well we've got um, a good number of international students. We deliver the programme in a range of ways, uh, predominantly online, but we also have um, a series of face-to-face -face masterclasses and also kind of combinations of both, and that's been over the last 40 years. It's aimed at those who are new to teaching and training and who wish to advance their skills and knowledge in medical education. Well, I would maybe argue that you don't need to be so new to teaching to get something from the programme. And we provide high quality, relevant and sustainable educational programmes and these, are, these have been getting developed over the 40 years from being sent a series of papers through the post <laughs> to using the virtual learning environment. As a quick overview of the master's programme, um, you can do the postgraduate certificate in medical education, which is uh, 60 credits, where we cover learning and teaching, principles of assessment, and there's also a range of optional modules that you can choose from um, to fit in with your own, your own interests. If you carry on to the diploma level, that's a further 
60 credits, leading to 120 credits in total, and we cover aspects like curriculum planning, leadership and healthcare education. And also, if you are planning on carrying on through to the master's programme, we also have a research methods module to make sure that you have the knowledge and the skills to, to go on to do a, a good dissertation. I said we have local and international students. Um, our, our students are from, all, from globally all over. We have had students in the past from, I think it was, was it Alaska or Antarctica, Susie? <laughs> yeah. Um, Every continent. Exactly. So, um, and that's all, we take that into account as well when we're trying to uh, deliver the programme in a way that everyone can engage um, with the materials. Our distance learning programme structure is probably the most popular uh, programme structure because it's because of its flexibility and it fits in with um, with people who are working full time busy jobs as health professionals. You can complete the postgraduate certificate normally in a year. Um, however, we do have flexibility built into the system so that you can do a postgraduate certificate over the two years and the same then within the next stage for the diploma and the masters. Perhaps you have some extra time actually in your on your hands at that point you can actually fast track by taking two modules at once um, although each of the modules are 20 credits so that's a notional 200 hours of time so we do have to get permission from the programme director um, for that. The core modules in the diploma can be taken at any time after that first um, learning and teaching module to allow for the maximum flexibility and student choices. And I'll show you some of the modules um, later on that you can take. We also have three intakes per year. So you don't just have to start in September like traditional postgraduate courses. You can start in the January, you can start in the May and you can start in September. With the distance learning programme, there's no compulsory face-to-face -face teaching in Dundee, with the exception of the simulation module, um, which started last year, and we have one week face-to-face -face, um, in Dundee. But if you're based in Dundee, this should, should be uh, easy enough to, to join into. All of our classes, we record them if they're live and so that they can be accessed later. And again, that's just acknowledging that many people are also trying to juggle um, busy professional working lives as well as different time zones. And see so each credit, each module is 20 credits long and they are carried, they're carried out over 12 weeks. So once you've signed up for a module, you have 12 weeks then to get through it. All the materials are available from day one. So um, again, trying to fit in with that flexible time zone. So you don't have to be, you know, be available for seven hours every single week. If you've got more hours in one week than the other, then you can work through them at your own pace. mentioned before some of our core modules and also the optional modules that we have. So if you've signed up for the, the masters, you'll be covering the core modules of learning and teaching and principles of assessment. Um, also then at diploma level, we've got curriculum planning or leadership, although you can do these core modules as part of your postgraduate certificate, if that's your interest. And we also have the core module for medical education research, if you're going on to the masters. Some of the optional modules we've listed here, um, again, is to try and fit in because we know that in terms of career paths for medical education and the sorts of teaching and learning that we're involved in, it can co cover a variety of different areas. So we've tried to include that in the optional modules um, to fit in with your own interests. And more recently, we've got a number of specialist groups as well in the clinical teaching. So that's down at the bottom there in the optional modules. In terms of the 12 week timeline, um, as I say, once you've signed up to a module, you have 12 weeks to complete it. You're given all the module content in week one, but there's also a series of reflections and set readings for you to do. There's some formative activities, so you'll be supported in your learning. We have lots of discussion groups as well, so that you can interact with your, your, your classmates and recorded lectures as well from our collaborate series. 
And then at the end of that, you have your week 12, which is your summative assignment deadline. So we're very flexible with as many things as we can, but the week 12 summative assessment deadline is the deadline there um, to, to finish up. In terms of the assignments, um, all of the assignments are written assignments. There's no exams um, that are related to, to the programme. And all of the assignments are contextualised to your own work setting. So we hope then that it's useful. It's not just theory, it's also thinking about putting that back into your own teaching practice. And as I said before, there's lots of opportunities for formative assessment and also peer review as well. You know, we have the feedback dialogue um, at the bottom. So it's, it's throughout that 12 week period when you go through the module, um, you're not left to, to get on with it yourself. <laughs> Well, you are, the learning is yours, but uh, we're there to support that as well. The delivery for distance learning is through our virtual learning environment, which is Moodle. Um, I've got some screenshots here. Um, and within the virtual learning environment, you can access everything online. So all of the reading that's available um, and the core texts are all available online as well. So you don't have to physically visit the library. Um, you can access it online resources. We also pull on external resources uh, for YouTube and also the sort of grey literature. So if we're linking into um, different frameworks. We use PowerPoints and MP3s and MP4s and recordings um, and also webinars um, to, to kind of pull in each cohort. And we have wikis as well so that you can work together with your classmates um, on certain um, activities. I think at this point, I'm going to move on to Susie and she's going to tell us a little bit about the, um, the programmes and the way that they're structured. I'm going to rely on you, Mandy, to forward the slides. <laughs> Great. Good. <laughs> the joys of Zoom. Yeah, so I'm uh, Deputy Director for the programme and um, up to this point, as well as our very large part-time distance learning online course, uh, we've had a full-time programme that has been um, at the Mackenzie building, but uh, as it won't have slipped your notice, there's been a bit of a pandemic going on. So uh, we have decided to not offer um, this on the, at the Mackenzie, but to rather offer it fully online, but full-time. Uh, so you'll, if you uh, remember Tay Park House, that's uh, certainly where I started uh, working with CME about 12 years ago. Uh, so unfortunately, we'll not be doing that this year, but we'll be trying out this full-time version online, which, you know, may, may open up to new markets that uh, we, we haven't uh, been able to support before, uh, people that can't get over here for, um, for, for reasons of care duties or, or, or culturally. Okay. So you may have noticed the word flexibility coming up quite a lot. And I think that is where um, we, we have really, really tried to focus on being flexible to, to our audience, to the needs to responding. Uh, as Mandy said, when this was started all those years ago by uh, Ronald Harden, the course was the correspondence course. And so it could be very, very flexible. People could start at any time, they could finish any time. They could submit their assignments anytime. Uh, but when we went online, that flexibility actually becomes very, very difficult to manage. And it also doesn't allow you to do a lot of peer supported work. So mm -hmm. in 2016, we, that's when we decided we really needed to start doing a cohorted program. So what do I mean by that? I mean, we have those three very distinct start points during the year. But I still wanted to very much to maintain as much flexibility as I could. So we designed uh, this program with a part time online so that the someone would normally do the certificate in one year, but they could start at any of those points that Mandy's mentioned. They'd start with learning and teaching and then usually go on to principles of assessment and then their option. But they could even switch their option and principles of assessment because not all the options are offered every time each year. They could then exit, that was very important to us, that students can go 
as far as they want at any stage. So they can come out with certificate or they could go straight on to diploma or maybe later on in their career, they'll come back to the diploma. And that's absolutely fine. So then coming in at diploma, curriculum planning or leadership, option two, an MER, if they're going on to the full masters or even if they're not, uh, if they want to learn about research methods. And then the master's dissertation with um, one person uh, supervising them. And at the learning and teaching stage, we have probably about 150 to 200 students each time coming into the program, which you can imagine can be a bit daunting for students. So we put them into smaller groups so that they can really get the hang of that online peer support, not in an overwhelming way, but in a very supportive way. But at the same time, we don't say, well, you can't talk to anybody else who's outside your group. So we're very much thinking about how do we best support our students through. And we do a lot of peer support on the program. We do a lot of peer discussion, uh, peer feedback. And you'll see in the discussion board little comments from people saying, oh, I saw you on principles of assessment. You think, oh, that's quite nice, you know, building up that global network, um, which is something that we're, we're very proud to support. Okay, next. But obviously, you know, busy clinicians don't always have um, this, this nice structure of three years where they can do one module per, per term. You might have professional exams or you might have a really busy term with students. And so actually we've allowed up to two years for each uh, part. So here I've just given an example of someone who's said, oh, I'm a bit busy in trimester two of year one. So I'll take a gap there. So they've stretched it over to four years. We leave this very much up to the student, how they do this. As long as they're within the two years for each stage, that's absolutely fine. Very much that, you know, autonomy that is needed by the students, but supporting them through the options that they have. Yep, okay. And sometimes, for example, our teaching fellows may want to do the course in two years. So there we'll start them off with just the one module so that they get the hang of it, they can work out where they're at. And then on trimester two, once they know much more about organizing their time working through the module, allowing them to do two modules at the same time, then trimester three, another two modules. And then in that second year, MER, and then going on to their project. And then this way, a nice structured way that our teaching fellows can get through uh, the, the whole masters in two years. Yeah. So this is just reiterating really what uh, we've already covered about the different stages and the different exit points. And the dissertation is uh, about probably a more, more like 15,000 word dissertation, 60 credits. So that's a notional 600 hours. But again, as Mandy said, very, very contextualized to the interests and the needs of the students. That said, Sometimes our students would like, you know, a little bit of guidance on their topic. And as Fiona has said for the BMSC, again, we welcome people from the School of Medicine who maybe actually want to make a suggestion of a dissertation project. And that comes through, uh, Shehab is the lead for that. Yep, okay. So some of our students have actually done an online ESME course um, through AMI, the Association for Medical Education Europe. And they have already done approximately 70 hours uh, notional time of studying on their ESME course. So we developed um, what's called recognized prior learning routine. And there the students need to do an extra um, reflection on what they have learned through their ESME course, which will take them up 10 credits. And then they'll do learning transitions, which is 10 credits and then the other two modules. So again, that flexibility, always you know, working with the students and working with what they've um, done already. Yep, Mandy. Specialty routes in dental education, anaesthetics, general practitioners, oncology, radiology, simulation, and surgeons uh, for people who want a named award at their certificate. So each of those would have to do their own specialty uh, module as their option for their third module of the certificate. The simulation, as Mandy's already mentioned, they need to do a one week 
um, on at Nine Wells. But as I've already mentioned, because of COVID, we're now for this year, for January's um, simulation module, we are developing a totally online simulation week um, just for this COVID year. But we will get feedback from the students, we'll find out how that goes, and that may be an option uh, that we offer in future. Yep. Okay, and as you would expect, we are developing knowledge exchange uh, with a variety of partners. We also have a lot of uh, memorandum, uh, trying to think what the me memorandum is, memoranda um, of understanding, uh, working with in other institutions across the globe. So, you know, it's, it's a really lively um, set of discussion boards, I'm sure Mandy will agree, with some really, really interesting um, cultural differences in education coming through. Um, you know, all sorts of things coming up. You think, oh, gosh, didn't realise that copyright law was very different in India, for example, was uh, something that came up in technology enhanced learning. So, you know, that's, that's really interesting for us as, as lecturers as well. And of course, when you get onto the project, then uh, that becomes even more interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep, Andy. Okay, I'll hand back to Mandy okay. now to talk about student feedback. Yeah, um, I'm, I'll leave you to actually read the student feedback that's on here, but um, the feedback that we do get from students is very positive. And one of our previous PhD students uh, looked at the, the careers of our students sort of after the master's programme and where they ended up. And um, it certainly seemed to be a, an opportunity to really build on that learning from the masters and almost supercharge their career if medical education you know, was, their, was their focus. So um, I think it has been transformational for a number of our students. And quite often when we bump into previous students at conferences um, that's reflected um, in the enthusiasm when they come up to our, our stand and they say oh hi <laughs> and we get to catch up um, and some of our, some of our, our master's program students come back um, as doctoral students um, and also then support us in terms of being our online tutors that are across across the globe as well. So we've mentioned that we, as well as the master's programme, if you have a, a taste for the research, for educational research, and you want to take that further, you can take it further. Um, we have PhD posts available through the centre full time. They're normally based at, in Dundee, and depending on the topic, uh, the data can be collected off site as well. Um, and Again, it's to, to come and speak to us if you are interested in doing a PhD. From last year, the University of Dundee also set up a part-time professional doctorate as well. So we have a couple of um, doctorate students come through that. And Susie is the, the lead for that for CME. If you have any questions, uh, she'll be able to help. And these are just some photographs of our previous uh, successful PhD students. And in fact, yes, the middle one, um, Asan Sethi, is the one that Man just referred to. So uh, if you want to read up anything about the, the, the transformation experienced by students um, going through the certificate and through the full masters, um, then Sethi et al. Um, as well as that, and I think Stella Howden may have flagged this up at uh, Grand Rounds uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, but with the, with the pandemic, I think a lot of people have had to pivot their teaching, which would normally be face-to-face -to, -face to online. Um, and so we have set up a CME webinar series, uh, if you haven't heard of it. And from that, you can download our Getting Started booklets. Um, but as well as that, that gives you access to a series of webinars that we've been running for the last uh, three months that we've had some great feedback on. And we're planning on carrying on as well over the next few months. So if you're interested in that, um, I've left the a sort of short link there you can sign up and you can get details of all the up and coming webinars as well as have access to the recordings from the previous webinars as well.
And I think that's all we wanted to share um, today. If you've got any general questions afterwards, you can contact us through CME courses at dundee.ac.uk, but we're also happy to answer any questions just now if, um, if there's and, anything. And uh, Jordan else. Napier, who unfortunately wasn't able to come, um, left a, uh, sent me a message to say that there is a small amount of funding available from March 2021 for staff in substantive posts and with formal teaching roles in the Dundee MBCHB, that's ACT funded money, so for example block organisers. Okay, I think I've stopped sharing my screen there, have I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> excellent. So th thanks very much. Um, there's, there's no questions here in the chat and the question I had was going to be about funding and Jordan has uh, answered that question via the medium of Susie. So, um, uh, there is a question. Uh, that's not a question. No, no, that's, that's the answer. Question. I have posted <laughs> it into the chat. Right, super. <laughs> um, I think this is actually fantastic. Um, when I was a registrar, I went down to Tayview House and, and went through some of these modules and some of the, the names and faces on your slides are very familiar to me. And that started my journey into medical education. And uh, I was never able to quite get around to doing the certificate or the diploma or, or a master's. Um, but, uh, but I've bumbled along. And I've been fortunate enough that you've asked me to come back and, and, and help teach on bits and pieces in the course. And, and, uh, and I do a, an, an annual session on, on grand rounds, in fact, which at least I have some standing of <laughs> knowledge of what's going on. And the students um, who are in that group, who are all doctors from around the world, are just so enthusiastic and so happy to be here. And um, there's a real, when you, a real sense of, of positivity about the course. and, and it's easy to forget how good a, uh, a program of teaching in medicine we have here and when you have the visiting students who are qualified docs from other areas coming in enthusing about how good we are it's, it's a timely reminder that we are a center of excellence and we should be proud of that and you particularly three should be particularly proud of it because you run it so thank you very much Thank you. Uh, if there's no more questions from the audience, then I'll just pull things to a conclusion. The, um, this recording will be edited briefly and then put on YouTube. You can follow our YouTube channel. The link is in the email I send around every week. Um, there are videos going back to 2013 if you want to top up your CPD um, on a variety of topics. Next week's uh, talk Visiting speaker, although not very visiting, because uh, it'll just be on Zoom, um, but uh, Prem Shekhar is a cardiothoracic surgery uh, in Boston and an associate professor of surgery in the Harvard Medical School. So he is going to talk about cardiothoracic surgery um, in, in America and the, the advances that they're making. But of course, now he's going to be able to talk to us about how COVID has really affected that speciality, which I think is going to be very interesting. Um, and I hope to tempt him into talking about COVID in America without trying to be too, too political about it, but it's clearly been handled very differently in America than it has been over here. And I hope he'll be able to share some insight into how that's affected um, yeah, the uh, people working in that environment. Um, but we'll see. Anyway, that'll be next week, same time, same place. Thanks again to Fiona and to Mandy and to Susie for a really interesting talk. Thanks to everyone for joining and I'll sign off. Enjoy the rest of your week. Take care now. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>